Hi folks, this is a continuation of some of the Chapter 3 homework problems. Here's number 16. Pumas are one of the best jumpers in the animal kingdom. If a puma jumps a vertical distance of 12 feet when it leaves the ground at an angle of 45 degrees above the horizontal, with what speed did the animal leave the ground in meters per second? Okay, so here's a little picture of what is going on. We've got our little puma that's going to jump a vertical distance of 12 feet at a 45 degree angle and we want to know the speed. How fast is the puma leaving the ground? Now let's take a look at the horizontal information and the vertical information that we have. Vertically we know that the puma goes upward 12 feet. Horizontally, we know nothing. We know nothing, Jon Snow. Absolutely nothing. So, um, we're not going to look at the horizontal information very much. We do know that the final vertical velocity, the final vertical velocity at the very, very tippy top up here is going to be zero. When it goes right up here, its final vertical velocity is going to be zero. We want to know if we look at it like this, if we can find the original vertical velocity here and we know the final vertical velocity here, if we can find this side of the triangle using just the vertical stuff, we know this is a 45 degree triangle, we can go back and find the velocity of takeoff. So we're not even going to involve the horizontal stuff, we're going to use just these two sides of this triangle. Okay, so final vertical velocity is zero. We know acceleration of gravity is going to be pulling it downward and trying to slow it at a minus 9.8 meters per second squared. Um, and the original vertical velocity we do not know. Let's go ahead and get into the metric system. This feet meter stuff makes me a little confused, so let's get this, especially since they ask for meters per second here. Let's get rid of through feet, go to meters, and we know they're 0 0.305 meters in one foot. When I do the math, let's grab a calculator here, 12 times 0 0.305, I get 3.66 meters is that. Now, if I take a look at all of these variables, which kinematics equation does that aim me towards? Well, that looks like VF squared is VO squared plus 2 times A times X, or Y, because we're going up and down. Final vertical velocity is zero. That component is going to go to zero. And I'm looking for original velocity. So let's solve algebraically for that. I'm going to subtract VO squared from both sides. So I'm going to end up with a minus VO squared is a 2 times A times Y. Um, and I am going to try and get VO, so I'm going to divide both sides by a negative, I'm going to take this negative, I think, outside of the square, because, well, no, I'm going to divide both sides by the negative, it's just get it over here someplace. So VO squared is going to be negative 1 times 2 times A times Y. We're going to square root this and square root all of that. So VO is going to be the square root of negative 1 times 2. Acceleration of gravity is a negative 9.8. You were worried about that negative sign, weren't you? And it worked out 3.66 meters. And the original vertical velocity ended up being, when we do the math, let me grab my calculator here, 3.66 times 9.8 times 2. Square root that mess. I ended up with an original vertical velocity of 8.47 meters was the original vertical velocity. Now we're going to take that and if that's 8.47 meters and that's this side of the triangle and I know that this is 45, I'm going to solve for V. Okay, well V is my hypotenuse. This is my opposite side, because it's not touching, which trig function has opposite and hypotenuse? That would be sine. So the sine of theta is opposite over hypotenuse, 
and I'm looking for the hypotenuse, so the hypotenuse is going to be equal to the opposite divided by the sine of theta. The opposite is 8.47, the sine of 45 degrees, and so the velocity with which the puma leaves the ground, 8.47 divided by 45 sine. I end up with just about, when we round it off to 3 sig figs, 12 meters uh, per second. And I this should have been meters per second. Oh my goodness, I forgot a unit. Okay, that will do for the Puma problem. That was the original velocity of that Puma. Let's do one more on this video. And let's go back to, let's talk about the moon. We're playing golf on the moon. Uh, woo, sliding back and forth. Sorry about that. Sometimes my, my tablet gets a little crazy. An Apollo 14 mission, astronaut Alan Shepard hit a golf ball on the moon. The acceleration of gravity on the moon is about one-sixth that of the value on Earth. Suppose he hit the ball with a speed of 25 meters per second at an angle of 30 degrees above the horizontal. I want to know how long was it in flight, how far did it go horizontally, and how high did it rise vertically. Um, this is a picture that was actually taken on my kitchen counter. A friend of mine has a uh, commemorative golf ball from that mission, which is pretty cool. His dad worked for the NASA in, back in the day, so that was kind of fun. Okay, here's the picture. And here's what's going on. So we have this thing that is shot at 25 meters per second, meters per second, 30 degrees above the horizontal. And I want to know everything. I want to know how far did it go horizontally, which is x. How high did it rise vertically, which is y. And I want to know the time of travel. So t is the other thing that I want to know. OK. What do you do the first time? First thing, if you've got something shot at an angle, you break that into components. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to drop a perpendicular down, make a right triangle. My horizontal velocity is going to be my hypotenuse times the adjacent side, so times the cosine of 30. So horizontal velocity is going to be 25 meters per second times the cosine of 30 degrees. If I grab a calculator, v horizontal then is going to be equal to 30 cosine times 25, and I end up with uh, 21.7 meters per second. Original vertical velocity is going to be equal to 25 meters per second. This is the opposite side because it's not touching my angle. So this is going to be times the sine of 30 degrees. So the original vertical velocity, 25 times the sine of 30, and I'm going to end up with 12.5 meters per second. And that's going to be my original vertical velocity. Next, I'm going to set up my two columns, horizontal stuff and my vertical stuff. OK, horizontal stuff. Here's my horizontal velocity, 21.7 meters per second. Do I know x? Nope, but I want to find x. Do I know time? Nope, but I want to find time. Vertically, I know it's going to be shot off originally with a positive 12.5 meters per second. I know that when it lands again, it's going to have a final vertical velocity of a minus 12.5 meters per second. I have both up and down motion, so I'm going to call everything up positive, and everything that's in a downward direction, I'm going to call that negative. You only have to have that if you have motion in two directions. What else do I know? I know that I am looking for Ooh, I slid too far. Sorry about that. I know that I am looking for y. y is question mark. And I know the acceleration of gravity is 9.8 meters per second squared divided by 6. That is 1 sixth of what it is on Earth. So 9.8 divided by 6 is about 1.63 meters per second squared. We don't know time. Don't know time, and I think that's all we got. Okay, let's start a solving. Well, we've got enough information here. Let's go forth and find time. So first off, I'm going to find 
time because time we both know is really handy. I've got VO, VF, A, I'm looking for time. I'm going to use my old friend. VF is VO plus AT. Time is going to be final velocity minus original velocity divided by acceleration. Final velocity is a negative 12.5 meters per second because that's going to be going down minus original velocity 12.5 meters per second going up. Acceleration of gravity, gravity is going to pull the ball down towards the center of the moon 1.63 repeating meters per second squared. So how long is that golf ball going to be in the air? Well, time for the golf ball to be in the air is going to be 12.5 plus 12.5 divided by 1.633. I don't know what happened there. Hmm. Hello? 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 No, oh, there it is. Okay, it was waiting for me. 15.3 seconds was the amount of time in the air. Now that it has that time for it to go into the air, we're going to go back up here and we're going to plug that in there and find uh, horizontal distance. So horizontal distance is going to be velocity horizontal times time. And my velocity horizontal, let's see if it'll let me slide a little bit. It did. Horizontal distance, it's going to be 21.7 meters per second times that time, which was 15.3 seconds. Seconds are going to cancel. This is going to give me a horizontal displacement in meters. So distance is going to be 21.7 times 15.3. I'm going to get 332 meters. Holy moly, that's over three football fields. You can shoot golf a long way on the moon. Last but not least, we want to know the displacement up and down. We want to know why. Now, here's the challenge with finding why. The problem is we know it's going to go up with a positive. I'm going to change colors so this shows up. We know it's going to go up with a positive 12.5 meters per second. If I use as a final velocity my minus 12.5 meters per second over here, what's the total displacement up and down? It's going to go, whoop, whoop. my total displacement is going to be zero. It's going to end up back where it started. So in order to find y, what I'm going to have to do is, is I'm going to have to use the velocity at the top as zero. So in order to do that, which way should we go? Go up or go down? Well, I think I'm going to go down because I know in another problem I went up. So I'm going to use the second half of the path. I'm just going to use this half of the path going down from the top down to the bottom. So here goes nothing. My original velocity at the top is going to be zero. The time I don't is going to be half of this. The time is going to be one half because that 15.3 is for the entire journey. The acceleration of gravity we know is the acceleration of gravity on the moon, 1.6 meters per second squared. And I am looking for y. Well, what equation does that look like? That looks a lot like y is one half a t squared, where original velocity goes to zero. So y is going to be one half. 1.63 meters per second squared. Time is one half of 15.3 seconds squared. All of this is going to be squared. And what do I get for vertical displacement? Let's take a look. Okay, half of 15.3 is 7.65. Square that times 1.633. Divide that by 2 and I get an up and down displacement of 47.8 meters. Pretty cool stuff. Okay, that will do for this one. See you next time.